Mm. I'm still finishing my coffee from this morning. My name's Eric Wielander and welcome to Windy Tech, a channel all about smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. Today we're gonna to talk about the OnViz SMS1 motion sensor and is it or any motion sensors right for your HomeKit setup? So before you go out and buy any motion sensors or determine if that's something you want for your home setup, let's think about a few different things. Now, I previously did a video on automating your home with sensor automation. That could be motion sensors, door sensors, any other kind of sensors compatible with HomeKit. Uh, and so you can go check out that video. It's up uh, linked above. Another thing to consider is how the sensor communicates with HomeKit. Some motion sensors like Philips Hue or Acara require hubs from those respective companies to communicate with HomeKit. So if you don't already have a hub, say for Philips Hue, don't go buy their motion sensor. Others like the OnViz or the iHome uh, 5 in 1 sensor that I previously reviewed on this channel or the uh, Eve motion sensors, those communicate with HomeKit via Bluetooth, uh, talking directly to your HomeKit hub. Another thing to consider is do you need a sensor that works outdoors or in very moist, wet environments? Uh, that can cost you a little bit more money. Hue and Eve both make sensors that are rated for outdoors, but something like this OnViz SMS1 is rated specifically for indoors, which can be great if that's what you need because you can save some money compared to ones rated for outside, but just keep that in mind up front. At about $25 on Amazon in the US, I think this sensor is one of the most competitively priced motion sensors on the market, especially because it doesn't require a hub and talks directly to HomeKit with Bluetooth. A special thanks to OnViz for sending me this motion sensor. There's no other sponsorship going on here, uh, but let's go ahead and get started with setting it up. So. The sensor gets its power from two AAA batteries, and those are actually included in the box, so if you're thinking of getting this as a gift, you don't need to worry about the extra batteries. There's an LED status light in the front, as well as a, a tiny reset button on the side, which it comes with a SIM popper tool in the box, which is just nice to have anyways. Uh, and then that allows you to uh, reset it if you ever need to completely you know, move it to a new home or whatever. And like I mentioned previously with certain motion sensors, this one is meant for indoors only, and they recommend not keeping it near any kind of excessively moist environment. So maybe not even ideal for like a really steamy shower bathroom or something like that. To attach the sensor to the wall or wherever you're gonna put it, uh, it only comes with sticky pads. And I think that's one of the biggest downsides of this. There's, I wish that Onviz would include some kind of a, a, a screw mount or way to use a screw or, or a nail to uh, mount it to the wall, almost like a picture frame, um, especially because it's nice to be able to experiment with placement of the motion sensor while you're setting it up. And with something like a sticky pad put on drywall, uh, you kind of just have one shot before, you know, you, you. it does come with a second sticky pad in the box, which is nice, uh, but you know, you're, you're not really gonna be able to re-stick a sticky pad too many times before it just wears out, no matter how advanced the, the technology is on that, that stick'em. Now, setting this motion sensor up with HomeKit is really straightforward. You just scan the code and then go through the steps in HomeKit. There's no third-party app needed. OnViz does have their own third-party app, but you don't need it to set it up and use this sensor with HomeKit, which I think is the beauty of HomeKit in that you can completely take care of using accessories without having to install um, apps from certain vendors. So, a little more on the specs of this sensor. It communicates with HomeKit via Bluetooth 5.0 LE, uh, which is nice to see Bluetooth 5 out there on the market uh, in sensors. And the battery life with those two AAA batteries is rated for 15,000 hours, which is about a year and a half of solid use. And then to replace the batteries, you can just remove the motion sensor without actually uh, pulling the back door part with the stick'em off the wall. You can just lift it from that door and, and then replace the batteries, put it back on 
on, you don't need to unstick the stickum just to change the batteries. And it's rated to sense motion from about seven meters away. I didn't test the distance, um, but it, you know, I just used it in a specific hallway and it worked great at picking me up every time. So another bonus of this sensor is that it also senses temperature and humidity, and you get those as uh, values in HomeKit as well. So again, good way to keep an eye on if the sensor's in too moist of environment for it to be safely operating, but also just uh, nice values to know. This is also true of the iHome 5-in-1 smart sensor that I've previously reviewed on this channel as well. So. How does this motion sensor perform in day-to-day -day use? And I've been using it for a couple of weeks now, and overall I'd say it's pretty quick. Uh, you wouldn't notice the speed difference between it really and maybe other motion sensors. I'd say maybe it's even a little faster than the iHome, but I haven't done any like you know timed comparisons. It's kind of tricky to do, and some of that depends on the details of your home kit setup, but I would say that you're probably not gonna be disappointed at all about the speed of how this senses. Also, another thing to note about HomeKit sensors and triggering is when they get triggered, they usually uh, trigger in HomeKit for about five, 10 seconds or so. So if you have an automation where say like the motion sensor is triggered, then the lights turn on, and then you trigger the motion sensor and then immediately try and go to the switch to turn off the light, you might see that the light might not turn off yet because the sensor's still in a triggered state. So just a small detail to keep in mind that, that might uh, throw you off. The other thing that I like about this sensor is that it seems to have a nice balance of sensing a broad enough area to trigger the motion, but then also not too broad of an area that it gets a lot of false alarms. I've used other motion sensors, especially in non-smart home tech like motion light switches that tend to get lots of false triggers uh, just from, from little tiny movements that are, that are way outside the view of the motion sensor. And this seems to have a nice balance balance of just looking at what you would expect as far as a range of motion around it. Um, the only false alarm I really get from it is when the cats are, are locked in the basement in the morning, they'll jump up at that basement door to try and get out and that triggers the motion sensor. But you know, really that's, uh, you know, and that, that kind of thing also can be solved with you just experimenting and placing the motion sensor in the best place for your location. And one tip on that is that you really want to set up motion sensors so that the motion happens horizontally to the sensor so that you're moving across the sensor, not towards it. Uh, it tends to have more difficulty sometimes uh, sensing things coming towards it just based on how you know this IR stuff works. So a motion sensor can provide a magical, just kind of, it just works automation in your home. And I think if you're looking for one that goes indoors, you can't beat the price and performance of the OnViz SMS-1. So there's a link down in the description. I'd highly recommend checking it out if you think it's something you might be into. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. it really does help other people find it on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I should have turned that light off when I started filming because look at that, it's like crazy bright in here.